Right. What is going on, everyone? It is Jack, and today I am here with the woman, the myth, the legend, Mama Deadhead. Hey guys, what's up? All right, so we are going to be having a chat. We just finished up her chat and her side of things about the reasons that we dislike Mr. Dixon, and I'm going to include a part that we chatted about earlier with a separation between... Um, actors versus their characters and fat like fiction and all that to kind of explain where we're coming from so that it doesn't seem like we're just attacking the characters or the people that play them or people that support them I guess we are one big fandom we're all supporting the same thing so I know that it was we considered bringing it on later but um, I think it's really important to note to begin with that we dislike the character. We do not dislike Norman in any way, shape, or form. We definitely separate... Says you. I'm kidding. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> we definitely separate, you know, real life and fantasy TV show. It's not a documentary, although it would be kind of cool if it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So, we definitely separate that. And if you're coming here because you really like Daryl and you're, like, taken back, like, whoa, like, he's one of the main characters on the show... We don't mean it towards you either. This is just our opinions. I've always said that decorate your house in Daryl Dixon wallpaper. Just, I, I don't care. <laughs> it's just not for me. It's just not for me. When did you first start to dislike Daryl? Okay, so the first couple seasons, I didn't necessarily like or love him as a character. He kind of felt more like comic relief to me. And then around season four, Four ish I felt a very distinct change in the way that they were writing him like it seemed like they realized how popular he was or how popular he could become and so they started writing him a bit differently giving him a lot more than they would have in the past and he seemed to be becoming a different type of character that didn't necessarily make me dislike him I just kind of separated him from the other characters in the show because he didn't feel as genuine or natural but the first time that I really was very aggravated with him was towards the end of season six with the whole Denise incident and then him kind of rushing off and very, again, irrationally, not thinking clearly, but very hot-headed and getting other people to have to come after him because he wasn't thinking clearly and then the everything with the lineup and Glenn and there wasn't a ton else in season seven that I remember that really bugged me about him because he was just kind of suffering for most of season seven and quiet and then a lot of the really strong i i hesitate to say hatred because hatred at least for me hatred is very strong for me and even though there are times i definitely feel like i have hated him a lot of the stuff in season nine and well not nine eight first really bugged me like morales and the kid that he shot after at the outpost and then disagreeing with rick at every turn and pulling yeah. in rosita and tara to disagree on the same things and plowing into the sanctuary killing a bunch of innocent workers there and there was just a very large chain reaction of stuff that after the whole thing with negan it kind of chilled out for a while but then season eight it just got worse and worse until nine and then nine had the whole thing with rick and i know that obviously step stepping back and looking outside the show andrew lincoln announced he was leaving everything and i know they wrote it that way so the him diverting rick you could look at as a reason that rick was in that position in the first place and really? Maggie as well, like that the whole thing with them and Oceanside and everything really didn't sit well with me, but I, that was a little more in depth than I thought it would be. <laughs> no, I, I totally get where you're coming from. So was there ever a time when you sided with Daryl on something or do you feel that he has any redeeming qualities about him? Um, I guess you said sided with, right? So, 
Season one, like I said, he felt more like comic relief. He was you know, hot-headed, stereotypical redneck. Wasn't really that... Like, there wasn't really that much depth, depth to the character. But season two, when he seemed to be the only one that cared about looking for Sophia, that was kind of one of the only things that really resonated with me, with him. But then he would go and do something like digging at Randall's scab with a knife to like torture the kid and that then it would just put me right back I'm like eh, all right I don't I, I like I was starting to like him and then I'm like eh, I don't really like him that much like he's kind of doing really shitty stuff so I mean there, there were times that I was a little more than tolerant and thought that that was cool and believe it or not I know a lot of people don't like still with Beth but I thought that was one of the most vulnerable and open and honest episodes that he's had and I really liked even though he blew up at her and he said a lot of really hurtful shit he finally actually spoke his mind and where he was coming from because I feel like in season four they really cut back on that season three he seemed to be he seemed to have a personality and character and in season four that seemed to just all disappear and he just seemed to be this like strong silent type whereas in season three, him and T Dog were debating about killing the prisoners and the morality behind it and everything, and that it just felt like that completely went away. So currently, about redeeming qualities, though, I don't know if I'd say redeeming, but he definitely had some in the past. But at the current moment, I don't know if I feel like he does. I don't feel like he has any natural ones, that's for sure. But I feel like they could, they could be leading up to giving him once forcibly if that makes sense like w things that would not feel natural to Daryl as a character but you can tell yeah. they're putting in there just so that people like him more if that makes sense kind of confusing but hopefully yeah. that makes sense well now that you mentioned Beth I know that's something we didn't talk about in um, my chat I, I wish that there would have been a moment or I guess there still could be where he has a moment like that because I feel that when you come from a past like you know, me and him both had rough past. It is okay to blow up sometimes because it's a lot. And especially when someone makes like just assumptions about you that can hurt your feelings. I, I totally get that aspect of his character. But it's also like, why can't he have that moment and realize I need to come across in a different light? Because I come across as a person that might have been to prison. Like, I come across as a person that isn't approachable. I come across as. I, I don't talk a lot. I kind of like, I grunt. So I wish that he would just take those times and maybe like grow as a character versus it seems like he had that moment and then just like, like went even more back and it made it like worse. Yeah. When I think that Beth could have been like a light, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That could have been a helpful thing. Because yeah. I think she understood. Oh, yeah. She definitely and understood. I feel like we, we almost got hints of that with. Henry, when Henry kind of put him in check, and King Ezekiel yeah. did sort of too at the, the end of the season, but when Henry pretty much just disagreed with everything he said and was like, yeah, I, I, regardless of why you think you're doing this, it doesn't really matter, you're an asshole, like, this isn't the way you, you do this, and I know we talked, we talked a lot in yours about him using Henry and everything, and I feel like there could have been a very emotional, but a very constructive conversation had between Daryl and Carol and Ezekiel and some of the other characters in the show that were close to that whole situation once everything went down with the Pikes kind of explaining why that was not a good idea to begin with but it doesn't really seem like anyone's addressed it or is going to address it and I hope that they do but I really don't feel like they will when it comes to him and bad decisions they never seem to be no is it dislike the most about Daryl? Aside from the fact that he never seems to take a damn shower. Um, oh yeah, I left that out of my chat. Let's chat about this. No. <laughs> um, it's honestly very similar to kind of what you were saying about it. That just the fact that he, and I know it comes off very, I don't, I don't want to say rough, but very not controversially it just comes off as a surprise to think that he doesn't seem like a very loyal character because he's definitely done a few things with characters or for characters that has exhibited a lot of loyalty like with 
the claimers and, and Joe and everything. He thought he was alone. He sided with them, saw who they were coming up against, and basically offered his life to save the three of them. And that's very noble. And I like that. That was one thing that I didn't really think about with things that I liked. Like that was something that I really admired that he did. And it doesn't really seem like he's done a lot of things like that recently. It seemed like he just goes against everybody at almost any chance he can, especially in season eight with Rick and the end of season six, just not listening to anybody. Glenn specifically tells him that like we can figure this out like I like I get you need to figure your shit out we can figure this out but we need to go back home and do it because stuff's gonna go bad out here and that's exactly what happened and he just didn't listen and in season 8 with Rick the guns and blowing open the sanctuary that ended up leaving them a very easy opportunity to get out and there was just decision after decision that he's made that is going exactly against everything that everyone else is trying to do to work together he just seems to be uh, pulling in the other direction i can see what you're saying it really seems like especially in season eight that he was coming from a me what can i do to service me attitude versus like how can i get back at these people for what they did not how can i help my people be safe yeah i, I can understand that so um have you read the comics and if you have <laughs> which I know you have, does the addition of Daryl in the show take away from anything you feel? Does your love for the comics make you, you know, feel some type of way about Daryl? The show has changed so much to accommodate this character. How do you feel about that? I definitely feel like the show has done more than just a few things to accommodate for him, and I know we, we definitely we talked quite a bit about some of the specific things that ha they've changed when we were discussing this earlier with you but a lot of the things that they changed kind of the the root of it is that they were very strong kind of character defining or bonding moments with other lead characters like Rick and Carl and people like Abraham and Tyrese and Glenn all had much stronger bonds and relationships with Rick in the comics, but they were kind of robbed of that in the show because all of those moments were just given to Daryl. And so a lot of those times that they would have had, could have potentially had scenes with Rick, it almost wouldn't have felt natural and they probably skipped out on a lot of scenes like that because they didn't feel they had that sort of understanding or connection and um a lot of thing like i we also figured out with yours that i initially thought that dwight came before daryl but i feel like they had come up with the concept of dwight before daryl even if they, they didn't have him on the page they probably kirkman probably had an idea of that and maybe wanted to see how it would go over in the show or something and it just seemed like he was the least believable out of that main group in Atlanta. It just seemed like he was the one that didn't fit. Everyone else seemed very believable. You know, like, they could be my neighbor. And obviously it was Atlanta. It's the South. Like, there's going to be people like that. I understand that. But he seemed like, I don't know, he just seemed, he seemed like the least believable character there. And because... You know, I never really thought about it that way. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but they accepted racist into their group people of color in it are okay with that to be fair like, we didn't see a ton of racism specifically from Daryl but the second episode of the show has the n-word with the hard r I think three or four I, times which hey you and your brother can leave I don't care what you're catching for us next like you don't get to treat people like that yeah no and I mean, again, we didn't really see Daryl and Merle together at the camp, so we don't know how he was acting while Merle was still there. We just know how he was acting with the knowledge that these people just left him behind. So he could have very well been exactly how you're thinking and been just as horrible as he was, but he could have been the other uh, way around. I I, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think he was. I think he <laughs> yeah. was closer to Merle, but there was definitely something in him that was a little better than Merle, at least on the surface, the first season or two. 
because his decision to help the people on the bridge is a good example of that. Like, Merle wouldn't have done that. Like, And it was very clearly stated when they were together that Daryl clearly didn't have the exact same mindset as Merle because they were planning on robbing the entire Atlanta camp And yeah. when Merle got back. And because Merle never got back, that never happened. But if Rick hadn't, like, if everything with Rick hadn't happened, who's to say they wouldn't have robbed the whole camp and maybe killed a person or two and just dipped? with all the supplies i said in mind that he could have easily became a savior because he's a right hand man he's a follower he he hasn't presented any like leadership qualities yeah. i feel i feel that in the comics like i said in mind that it feels like a group survival story versus the show feels like look at these two or three or however many people like up here and then eh, everybody else is just kind of like meh I think one big reason in that is that they're, they do a lot of things different from the comics, which sometimes is fine. Herschel, oh my god, a world of difference, amazing, love that change, yes. Rip Scott. Um, yes, oh my goodness. Um, the fact that I think King Ezekiel was able to actually overcome Shiva's death, he wasn't able to do that in the comics, I don't think he ever was able to get over that. So, some things they have done, I think, have been fantastic. But the big thing with Daryl is, a lot of times when they've taken something away, they've given something. Or, like, they give something and they take away. So, Sophia dies, Carol lives. Andrea dies, and we have strong women that can take over that TV arc. Is it, is it missing? Yeah, but I feel like they did a good job with the characters that they did keep. But you, they added Daryl, but they didn't take out Ty. They didn't take out Glenn. They didn't take out Abraham. They didn't take out... And part of me would say that maybe taking some of those out would help because it would make me at least feel a bit less robbed. Make it not feel like a, a comic knockoff and more like authentic. Mm -hmm. Versus like, here's a character, but... I mean, we're not going to really give him any time, so. Yeah. But here's another one, if that makes sense. No, that does. Because uh, I, I, now that you mention it, with, um, with someone like Abe, I felt like he definitely had those, those humorous and very iconic moments in the comics, but it translated much better to screen than I thought it would. It wasn't as uh, cartoonish as I thought it might have come off and robert kirkman himself even said that he he immediately regretted killing him off in the comics when he did in the way he did because he felt like he would have been a good addition to all-out war and even though he didn't keep him around for that i felt like between him between those three that you mentioned i feel like the one that they did the best service to was glenn they definitely yeah. kept him as close to his comic counterpart as possible while still making it believable and letting Steven kind of run with it himself because there were still instances where I, I almost feel like they, they did Glenn a little better in the show because they made it such a key point that his moral compass was such a strong part of him. And yeah. he also, we got to see him battle with that. And I feel like we didn't really get to see that much in the comics. Whereas as yeah. much as I love Tyrese in the show, it felt like he was all over the place in the show compared to the it, comics. And Chad completely. did a phenomenal job. But I just feel like a lot of the things that they like one of my one of the scenes that I really like is the the prison thing where they find out about Karen and, and that that exchange between him and Rick and it just it I felt like it was very tense and it went over very well and Chad did a great job with that but it it felt like you could definitely see like they were battling pun not really pun intended between those characters because you couldn't really I don't know it's just the the arcs that they were taking from him and the bonding you could see that yeah. early on Rick was not going to have bonds as strong with those characters and I feel like as a result they tried to make those characters have bonds with other people and it kind of worked but in the long run it really it really didn't because they didn't really end up knowing what to do with Ty so they just got rid of him because they just didn't really know how to yeah. write him anymore yeah and I can definitely, and this is coming from someone that obviously their profile picture is still meeting Chad Coleman from years ago. Like literally the whole reason I built my channel was because of his advice and just how amazing Chad Coleman is in real life. 
life, humanity-wise, Tyrese, like, 100%. I adore him. Comic Tyrese are two different characters. Like, they're, they're totally different. Oh, yeah. And part of me that I would have liked to see Tyrese and his daughter, but I do love Tyrese and Sasha. So I think that I would have still been down with bringing in Sasha instead of Julie um, and that whole line. I just wish that it we could have had stronger connections with them because like you you have somebody that well, he, he plays a Mocklin on the Orville. He has range like dude can do a lot of stuff oh, yeah. like I wish that some of these actors got more more utilized. Oh, we haven't mentioned. Let's let's not get us started on Jesus. <laughs> let's not get us started on Jesus. Another okay. Video, another day. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so what, what do you think about hardcore Daryl stands would support if he threw Judith out of a moving car stands? Does it make you hate the character more? Um I feel like, whether we want to admit it or not, every group or every medium to large size group of stands mm -hmm. has those kind of stands. Whether we want to admit it or not, yeah. the ones that are normal and decent to one another try to distance themselves from those stands in their group because they don't want that to be the face of the person that they really enjoy. Yeah. And so, am I saying all, like, or are we saying that all the Daryl stands are like that? No, but there's definitely a very vocal social media presence of Daryl stands that are. And there's definitely a very vocal social media presence of stands for a decent amount of the other characters that are like that too, like Carol and the ship of Carol and Daryl that we both very wholeheartedly disagree with and Rashon shippers. They're, they're some of those that are the kindest people that I've ever talked to and then there's others that are some of the most condescending people and I think that there's those kinds of people that are the best of the best and the worst of the worst in all of the stand groups but considering I already was starting to have issues with Daryl having people that are so intent on shoving him and like liking him in our faces when we make comments about not liking them it does it sort of pushes me away but it it definitely is still more on me like I feel like it's still it's not like well they're telling me to like him so I'm not gonna like him like it, a, yeah a little part of it has sort of become that as it's gone on because yeah I but if you take really... away all the rabid daryl stands you would still not like daryl yeah i mean yeah. they definitely have made me more vocal about it on social media whereas i wasn't really before but hearing people try and excuse every single thing he did and not acknowledge the wrong that he's done or just immediately try to divert it to someone else gets very aggravating and i mean i'm not one i like it would be hypocritical of me to say that i haven't done that sometimes with jdm because sometimes yeah. i just like i have taken the time to explain my position on jdm and negan and the separation between obviously the character and the actor and why i enjoy the character it was similar to how you were explaining how you enjoy villain characters because they often seem more complex because when they do something good yeah. you're like oh well, that's interesting. Oh, I wonder what's gonna have, like, what's gonna come from this development. Whereas, when and good characters do, they're normally more like interesting and out. Yeah. And, and when what happens next? <laughs> yeah. And then just when good characters start doing very, very bad character things, like Daryl has done time and time again, it just it's more of a really why are you doing this? Like it's because you have an expectation of someone to be good, and even when you have an expectation of someone to be bad, your mind doesn't go further bad if that makes sense when they do yeah. something good when they do something good you're like oh whereas when someone a good does something bad you're like oh yeah and so it just gets worse whereas that it can only go up when bad characters yeah. do good things but when good characters do bad things it can go down much quicker if that makes sense i think that that was very similar to how you were explaining yeah that. i get it there it, it's just easier to go with something that you know will not like let you down if that makes sense like if 
I know that there is a fair chance that this guy might meet his fate by a whisperer. But am I going to be mad at the whisperer for doing whisperer things? Nah. Am I going to be sad? Yeah. <laughs> but am I going to be mad that a villain does villain things? No. Now, if Daryl were to go kill King Ezekiel, then yeah, I'm going to be mad. But that goes for, I love Michonne. Like, I love Michonne a lot. If she would go kill King Ezekiel, uh, nah, I'm done with her. Like, so, you know, it's kind of like a yeah. double-edged sword we're talking about. Yeah, they, they did bring up a lot of very interesting questions about morality. And as much as I wasn't a huge fan of... Michonne and Daryl, and that was probably my one main gripe about season nine, was that uh, the way that they were making us, it seemed like they were trying to force us so hard to just automatically side with Michonne and everybody on not wanting to help people. And the fact that they were not helping their friends or people that they once considered family just did not yeah. sit well with me. And I... It, initially it was just I was like I don't I think we should wait till we see why they want us to feel this way before we just accept it and it yeah. it felt so forced so often that it was getting to a point almost of being petty that I'm like I'm gonna be as far from accepting of this until they prove to me why I should feel this way because I don't think anything else in season 9 felt more forced than them trying to make us just automatically side with them and then that episode that they had with the flashback one of one of my favorite episodes of season nine because of how it was done but it brought a lot of moral dilemmas to the forefront with michonne and daryl so a lot of people that really liked them you saw very different reactions from them some of them defending them to the t like the throw the kid out the window kind of yeah. stands and then other ones acknowledging how it was ridiculously messed up and could they have potentially tried to not kill all the kids yes but then there was also everything pointing to that they really almost had no other choice and so yeah. I, I like that they're at least they seem to be giving points to where they're not requiring us to have blind faith but we'll see if they keep that up in season 10 because I, I don't yeah, know yeah i think this is where us doing reactions comes in handy because I'm pretty sure that me and you both were of the section of reactors that when, like, Michonne and everyone were acting so, like, I don't want to help people, I don't want to help people, like, bad, 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 <laughs> me and you were both like, what happened to make it this way? Instead of like, yeah, girl, like, <laughs> I agree with you, like, let, let's get on this train, fully agree, like, you do you type thing. We were like, what happened? Like, this isn't the Michonne that I know. Like, this isn't the, this character that I know because everybody was really shut off. It wasn't just Michonne. It was really everyone. And I think that it's cool that we can go back and be like, hey, you know, we did. We said that. <laughs> we're like, hey, wait. Yeah. We were questioning that. Okay. So, a break in the hatred for the question I've been waiting for. <laughs> so, I hope, I hope you could like cross over... Answer. If you could cross over a show or characters from a different show into the Walking Dead universe, who would it be? Drumroll. You, you're probably going to be kind of surprised by it, and I'm hoping you're not going to be mad. Oh, no. Um, I'd, I'm going to have to say Supernatural yeah. as well. Yeah. Initially, now initially, when I, was, when I was writing this, when I was first thinking about it, before we started yours... Um, and I mean, obviously I didn't, I'm not picking it just cause you picked it. I picked it before that, but yeah. I loved Z nation with a burning passion and I still do. And I still want them to renew season six for it. It was a very, very unique show with characters that were so ridiculously unique. I like, it was pretty much like every single character was a different personality of mm -hmm. a princess type character. They were so different and that's what made me love all of them long term is that they all were so odd in a good way for the most part that I could have seen a lot of them in the show and having interactions with some of the characters that we have, like the leadership characters in their group, the loner types, the mm -hmm. like badass fighters and everything. But I feel like clashing two strictly zombie shows is yeah. not, not necessarily disrespectful, but it, it doesn't feel right whereas supernatural just would feel right 
whether it was Sam and Dean or whether it was just Jensen and Jared coming into the show as characters, I, I would love to see Jared and Jensen in the show as survivors that were just wrecking shit. Same with, like, like if we could have, like, Jody in there at some new community, or, like, Charlie as well, like, could have Bobby be, like, someone that's, like, a librarian that, like, something, like, he God. could keep the wheelchair, oh. whatever, like, there's so many things they could do, and with some of the actors that they have, the guy that plays Gabriel could be someone in, like, like, a highwayman kind of group, and Crowley and Lucifer could be people that you're kind of unsure of, but they're supposed to be on your side, but are they really sort like, there's so many possibilities of things they could do. And they've already had little nods to each other. Like with the thing we mentioned with you, the Lucille cameo they had and Dean was like, Oh dad, would love this. And, uh, I just, it would be such a good crossover. I think there was another one too, but I'm just not thinking of it. It was like a little nod to the show. I can't remember. <sighs> I definitely feel like there was. I, I yeah, I definitely feel like there there was. Z Nation made a reference to them. I I don't know. It was either the pilot or the second episode, and they. I think it was the the pilot. It was called the pilot. I think was called Puppies and Kitten. And so the main like the main guy we started following. We didn't follow him for very long, but the main character that we were following referenced the the zombies in that show as puppies and kittens, which I thought was very very entertaining considering that that's how we started talking about them when we were trying to not think about them and that's what they use in that show to only think about them like the, like puppies and kittens like watch out for puppies and kittens but in this it's like oh just think about something else like puppies and kittens and it just makes me think of t-dog and he's like dead puppies and kittens so it's, <laughs> i love that yeah that's you i'm so glad we agree on supernatural <laughs> that's great the show's yeah. so close to my heart for that show go oh, back into the questions okay so back into the hatred questions <laughs> maybe not hatred um would you like him or like him more or would it help his case if he had a significant other would i immediately like him more probably not really but do i think it could potentially potentially help his case <laughs> yes definitive maybe not but I definitely think that the best chance for them to make him seem more tolerable at least for us and to make it feel natural would be if he had someone in check so whether it was a significant other or another person like Beth or like Rick that could like morally check him and be like dude no like you need to like cut the shit I think that it could could potentially work I feel like significant other would probably have more of an impact on him though because just having a camaraderie with like you know another brother like i don't think that it'll have as much of an impact on him not to say it wouldn't have any but having um, like he's always seemed to be more affected by what <laughs> i was gonna make a petty remark and say well he probably <laughs> wouldn't be pushing his significant other into holes and fighting them no probably not He'd just be oh, he'd just be shoving him away and calling him a stupid bitch. You alright? Just let me be. Stupid bitch. But uh, that's besides the point. <laughs> the truth bomb. Sorry. Who is your favorite female character, and who is your least favorite? And what if they got together with Daryl? Favorite female character is least favorite i can say for sure is carol favorite though that's tough i feel like i did really like michonne for a while but there were some of the stuff going on last season kind of made me question that a bit but i feel like it wouldn't be right to say that someone like lydia or magna or yumiko were favorites because we really haven't known them long enough to be able to say that we did lose a lot of it. Like, we lost Enid and Tara, and so we lost a lot of people that have been long-standing. But yeah. I'd have to say, I would probably would have to agree with you that it's Michonne at this point, because even Rosita, like, Rosita, I really did like Rosita for a while, but then, same as you were saying with Tara and Daryl back in Season 8, she really just got on my nerves. 
nerves. Same with season seven too, like her and Sasha going on that suicide mission. Uh, don't even get me started. Jeez. Yeah. Um, and I think Carol and Daryl getting together. Um, I agree with Angela Kang. She was on Talking Dead and, or I think it was Talking Dead, and quoted as saying that it would pretty much feel incestuous at this point. And I agree, it would just, it would, not only would it just feel weird, because they're, a, and I know people get so triggered when you say that it seems like a maternal connection that they have, but that's not to say that she's like his mother. It's to say that she's treating, or she's acting maternally towards him, and not just him either, other characters too, but she's know definitely that, um... not romantic towards him interject here and i know that a lot of people say um age that we're like downing her age because you can like there are a couple reactors out there naomi so you know that i talked to you about naomi because i wanted to talk to her she i'm 24 and i'm pretty sure she's 19 or 20 and i want to mother her <laughs> i want to like give her a hug i want her to be my daughter like she's so sweet she's so cute and like i'm not I'm not old, so by saying like really? she has a, <laughs> by, by saying that she has a maternal instinct, we're not saying like oh she's older, so she has to have a maternal instinct. It's just the way that she's coming off. You can you can be like an, a year apart in age and still have a maternal instinct over somebody. Yeah. No, I, I get that, and I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the other ways that it was explained. Um, not only would it just feel weird if they were together at this point, it they would be one of the most destructive relationships on the show. Like Rick and Jesse would have been a better pair than Carol and Daryl, probably. Because at least they seemed kind they seemed kinda opposite, so it seemed like they would have worked. Whereas Carol and Daryl both, if they had problems they were dealing with, they would just ignore them and just leave oh, each other yeah bottle all the problems up not talk about it and then just blow up go on a killing spree and then have a pity party and just not deal with any of their issues and i really I wish it wasn't it. like that but that's how it's come off in repeated cycles for both of them we're on the same wavelength of <sighs> if you are with somebody they need to be able to check you and check each other i mean it's it's even like with Rick and Michonne. Him over the head with a rock. Mate. Like, here's your check. See, though, like, when you see your partner becoming literally, like, derailed and, like, bloody, shouting and, like, check is okay. A check is not bad. But, so. Yeah, I think we're of agreement there. They definitely need to check. So, yeah. if Daryl was forced to have a significant other, who would you pick? I almost 100% would pick Connie because I oh. we're both on the same. Really? Yeah, we're we're both on the same wavelength, and that we feel like she has. I mean, she's seemed to have an impact on him already. She's checked him mm -hmm. a few times, not as significant as knocking him over the head with a rock, but. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah. She she gets along with dog. That's already a huge plus, and yeah, she seems to. The fact that she is deaf is almost a perfect storm for a character that he needs to talk with. That he needs to learn a different way of communication than the one he's been using the entirety of the show because it clearly won't work with her, and so it'll force him to think of a different way to express himself and I feel like she won't be afraid to call him out on shit she won't be timid she won't be she is ridiculously strong and clearly one of the most independent characters on the show she doesn't need Kelly but Kelly's always been there for her and so I feel like and I, I feel like they've had some looks too like they've they've had some some up and downs and like, even Rick and Michonne had stuff like that as early as season three when he was talking about the bringing in the powder milk and everything. And she was like, oh, like, would you have brought me in if you had that? Or if I didn't have that? And he's like, no. And he was like, it must have been something else then. And, like, give her full up and, like, they, they haven't done stuff 
that obvious yet, but I definitely, I could see them 100% having something by the end of the season. See, I've been trying to pay more attention to that because I'm very oblivious to that type of, like, shipping type thing. Oh, like, I am too. Trust me. <laughs> like, with Rick and Michonne, the only time, like, looking back, I can see, like, her and Carl, like, bonding and her, like, really putting herself out there for Carl. I see that looking back objectively. But when they, like, held hands and, like, went for it in that moment, I wasn't reacting yet. And, like, me and my husband were watching and we were both like, what? <laughs> when did this happen? When did this develop? Because we... But I'm oh, trying yeah. to look out for signs now, and it seems like um, Daryl and Connie, it seems like they have that. It seems Slow like build. I definitely felt the exact same way when Rick and Michonne got together, and I wish I would have been recording, because <laughs> the internet blew up with oh, yeah, all of the hashtags. Rashone, clean loving, everything. And I started thinking back on it, like trying to go back and be like, there definitely had, like, this couldn't just me be me being on the spectrum, like, just, it couldn't just have been an r slash yeah. woosh the whole five seasons <laughs> she's been on the show, or nearly, Man, I it like, I, I, and so I went back and I was talking to other reactors about it, and I think I was talking with, um, Jess, Seska said about it, or, like, there were, there were a few people that I talked about, or that I heard yeah. talk about it, that mentioned some points. I think Brittany Butler might have been one, too, but yeah, they um, pointed I, out a few different true. points, like the one at the prison, where he gave her the up and down. I didn't notice that, and I think, I, I think, I think Yvette pointed that out on Talking Dead, as well. I, I don't like her, her Twitter at the moment, particularly, though, not a huge <laughs> fan, because of all the very aggressive ship between Carol and Daryl spamming, but that's besides the point. But I feel like <laughs> Daryl and Daryl and Connie could definitely, definitely have a thing if the writers will it. So they could obviously make it another way, but you never know. We'll see, I guess. Oh, so I saw now since we have talked about crazy stands, um, I did see a theory. Um, the Carol stands, Daryl and Carol shippers Hold on, um let me say, change your region real quick okay good i just figured you'd appreciate hearing this yes. one that um connie's feelings of love that she has for daryl um will not go anywhere because daryl will reject her for carol and she is going to be so angry that she's going to kill dog you know that's a theory going around right now I saw that on my timeline. I was I'm like, "I'm really hoping that whoever came up with that is joking, because not only is it like not funny to like kill a dog, just that's such a bad like. I'm not normally one to like pick fun at theories, but that is a horrible theory. I, she has such a strong bond with dog, and thinking that Daryl would would reject her for Carol insinuates Carol's having feelings for him and pursuing them when he was the one that shut down Carol's advances back in season three when she asked him to fool around on top of the bus because he was giving her a massage and she's like, oh, it's your man, you want to screw around? And he's like, no. And he's like, all right, let's 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 kind of get back to the group. I'm going to go down first. And he's like, she, she just, oh, even better. Like, she was being super flirty. And he shut that shit down real quick. And it was never brought up again. So ever since then, I've been like, there's no way they're getting together. If they do, it's weird. Don't do it. But that is a ridiculous theory. Oh my god. Fair. I'd... That would be such a disservice to Lauren if they made her character that basic. Definitely. I do want to say that I I wanted to put it out there that while we don't like Carol and Daryl, that this theory is so incredibly like outlandish and wild that I, as a person that like really does not like Daryl in any way, shape, or form... I would not think that any character would kill Dog. I don't think Carol would kill Dog, even though I don't like her. I don't keep. I don't think Daryl would. The only characters that I think might would be Alpha and Beta, and that's a maybe. But they wouldn't pursue Dog. They would just let Dog die in a herd or something. <laughs> Your dog. She's like, I don't want to talk. Don't make me talk about this. But yeah, that theory. I just had to tell you about it. <laughs> That's uh, that's a horrible theory. Oh my god. 
Okay, so last, but certainly not least, thing that Daryl can do at this point to redeem himself to you personally. To the point of liking him, like genuinely liking or loving him as a character, I don't think so. Like you were saying, nothing that would feel natural or organic. But do I think that there are things they could they could do over the course of a few seasons that would make me not dislike slash hate him, but make me more neutral towards him? Like if he's there just eh, rather than uh, I think yeah, they could they could get him to a point if they do a lot of good in rebuilding that is organic. Like if I th- I think him getting together with Kami would be a very good start to that that she could sort of check him in his worst impulses and make him realize, like, some of the shit he does is just dumb. But I don't know if, realistically, in the amount of time the show is going to have left in its runtime. And believe me, I love the show. I don't want it to end. But you also don't want to see your show be around long enough to become become the villain and just suck ass. So if, it, if I feel like it's getting to a point where it's not it's not going up i wouldn't have that much of an issue with them sort of just kind of tapering it off and having it end i don't think that the amount of time between now and that point is long enough for them to build him up enough like you said where it feels right and not forced and i didn't really think about it until you mentioned it but it would feel very very wrong for people that are hardcore fans of him now to have him change that much and i mean i i feel like i don't i obviously don't want people to see their favorites just torn down and turned into something completely different but i don't if they did start doing that i don't and it sounds horrible to say but i don't think it would affect me that much but i obviously wouldn't go i wouldn't go out of my way and above and beyond to pick fun at people that were losing the character that they liked. Like, oh, haha, he's not the Daryl you knew anymore. Like, n- like, I wouldn't be like that, but I obviously wouldn't. Me and you can go have a party together because yeah. we would agree. <laughs> but but it's, it's, I'm not gonna... Like, the, there's people that would do that in, I think, every stand group. Like we were saying, there's good and bad apples in all the stand groups, but it just seems like the overwhelming majority of the ones that are very vocal on social media are the bad ones even though we've met i'm sure we've both met some from each of the groups that are amazing people and that have their very definitive views and oftentimes the ones that are the strongest voiced whether negative or positive it always seems to stem back to something personal in their life which i find very interesting like, it's not usually just strictly the show. Characters have nothing to do with their real life. Usually the people that feel the strongest about the, the characters have some sort of very, very strong connection to them IRL, which I think now that I'm looking out back on that, that's probably why I connected so much with Carl. That could be a whole other... That could be a, that could be a Netflix series about how why I liked that character so much and why it was so dumb they got rid of him. I understand. I totally understand. Same way. I feel that same way with um Ty. Oh, Morgan and Ty. Morgan oh, yeah, and Ty. Morgan. Oh. Uh, I didn't want to harp on Morgan considering everything that's going on lately with him, but We're making a video about hating Daryl. <laughs> we could talk a little bit about Morgan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah. I to that character a lot because I mean I lost at the beginning of the apocalypse not knowing what was going on being hard for me to put him down but if my husband was the reason my child was no longer with me and I saw my husband devour my child I cannot say that I would not act the same as Morgan I just I can't because I can't picture that in my head like that happening I don't even. Like, I don't even want to. I don't even. I don't even have a significant other or child, and I don't even want to think about that. Well, like, I'm just I don't even want to think about, about that with my dog. That almost made me stop watching Fear when it started. When they killed that dog in the first couple episodes, I was like, "This might be too much for me." I, like <laughs> I was. I was feeling like Nikki was at the beginning of Game of Thrones. I was like, 
Like, I watch that and I'm like, oh, I, I hope that, like, because I know how much he loves animals and I do too. And that's always been something that I hate watching is when stuff like that happens to animals. Like, I'm a, like I feel like I, I struggle with empathy, but not when it comes to animals. Like, you touch an animal. <laughs> like, if yeah. someone kicks my dog, I don't care if they're my best friend, I will kick their ass out of my house. Like, I've, I've seen my friends, like, go to do something, like, if my dog's, like, sniffing too close, right, and they go to, like, like shove or whatever, and I'm, and I just, I give them a, I'm like, don't you fucking dare. Dare. Like, I get, if they're, if they're nipping at you, I get it, give them a little tap on the, like, no, stop, like, they're, they're young, they, like, they get a little excited, but if they're just, like, being investigative and, like, mm, that's super, super mega tangent, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about animal abuse now. <laughs> <laughs> so, this went in a very different direction yeah. okay I do want to ask you one final question I know that that was our last like official official question but we did have the question of who's your favorite female character or least favorite I know your least favorite male character but who is your favorite male character <laughs> are we going all time or currently alive Let's go with currently alive. Okay, that'll make it a, that'll make it a bit easier. Cause you just had to think about the death. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, now I'm thinking about all the things I love, but then it makes me also think about like why, what are reasons they couldn't be my favorite, and things they did that I was like, really, I really am not a fan of that. Um. I, I, I'd have to say Negan. It's close between him, Zeke, and Eugene. Because I and that that's not to say that I don't love the other male character like Aaron. But I just I they haven't given me enough with him. Like I know Ross is capable of some incredible shit, and I'm again I'm not trying to talk about the premiere. <laughs> you haven't seen it, but the, like Ross and. Um, Josh and so there, there's characters that were in contention that do get screen time and they give screen time to pretty much everybody in the premiere which they already said they're gonna do but like there's the main things that I didn't like about you was the way that they u use Eugene in season seven and eight they made it so hard to tell that he was still on our side and I mean maybe that was the point that they wanted it to be like he wasn't sure what side he was on but they could have done it a lot better because so many people hated his guts and then when he saved everyone's asses they didn't care which is not the response you want for that kind of thing you want people to be like bowing down like thank you lord for helping and saving us yeah i there was a lot of reactors that were not like that and i'm like M bitches i've been telling all of you that he is on our side and he was gonna save the day and then oh, no, no, he's not he's just full saving now just kill him and i'm like fuck be fair. That that category because you know that I like a good villain and mm -hmm. I don't care about a side switch. I said that I do not care about what side he's on. Okay. Don't care what side he's on, but... I don't care what side he's on, but make it consistent. Like, have it be consistent. Like, if he's gonna be a savior, okay. Eugene's a savior. Alright. Like, I can still like a character that's a savior. I'm not, like, cut off because the character's a, a villain. Like, have it be consistent. And there were those moments of, like, like you said, like, is he? Is he not? And then when he was really on our side, I thought back to all of those moments, like, in private with Father Gabriel. When he could have been, like, it's it's a ruse, come on, like, help mm -hmm. me out, like, a little bit. Or something, but he wasn't. I And they got my part in the reaction of went up to Rosita and I was like mm, I still don't like you and then Rosita punched him in the face and I said okay that helps <laughs> they added that in the compilation so that was funny I feel totally like they the what they were trying to execute with Eugene they did much better with Dwight like I feel like people yeah. were skeptical of him for the most part and there were still obviously going to be the few people that are like nah fuck him he's not going to trust us regardless whatever but there, but there was always that bit in your head that was like, he might actually, he might actually be there. But they paced it out well enough that you could see morally that he knew what he wanted to do and what side he wanted to be on. 
but you could tell that he had to do things the way he was in order to make sure that things went down the way they did whereas eugene genuinely felt like he was trying to fit in and be accepted there which to be fair the way that he was treated at alexandria when the first like season and a half he was there it's not that hard to understand why he was okay with people treating him as well as they were there because everyone was treating him like shit at alexandria because of the lie about washington and i mean again i don't blame him for that some people do and some people resent him forever for that but he had a skill like glenn said it perfectly he had he had one skill and we're supposed to be mad at him because he used it to survive i'm not like if someone like i don't know it's just it's it's weird but they and especially with rosita the way that she was treating him like with af, like right after the lineup and everything and how she was just degrading him every chance she got and forcing him to do shit and then he was just like i had enough and he just went with them and figured it was either death or maybe a better life than the one he was living there i think that all of it's a double-edged sword like i've said a couple of times because like i've said before if he wants to be a savior like you go out and be a savior like you do you because they were treating him much better but at the same time people did die for eugene so i understand where rosita is coming from in that aspect but as far as like now here and now i think that if rosita can let it go of all people like probably most affected by his lie and what he did then if she, if the character can do it like let it go it's just like i <laughs> i will never understand and i hate what Carol did to Karen and David. I can't stand it, will never agree with it ever. But Tyrese forgave her enough to where Karen wasn't even in his hallucinations of people he felt were wronged. So I'm gonna put it that in the back seat. <laughs> if he can get over it, I can find it in my heart to just be like, okay, hey, put that over here. Yeah. So if the character can do it that's most affected by it. I'm like, come on. All right. Come on. Okay, is there anything else you want to say? I'm, it's it's more so just a, a pondering thing. I'm very interested to see how they're going to have Daryl's relationship with Lydia be this season. And if they're going to have it develop more, I almost would rather her not develop one as much with him it rather someone else in the group like hell have her have her develop one with negan negan can try and have show a kid like that like she's hardened like carl she knows how to survive but she sort of needs the softer side of her tuned in a little bit whereas with carl was almost a little too soft towards the end where i mean that's a whole other thing where they like flip flops <laughs> him out of nowhere yeah. from wanting to gun down the saviors to all of a sudden not but that's besides the point but i feel like <laughs> he could be a very good influence on her but i also feel like just the kids in general with daryl are going to be very interesting to see especially judith because she seems to have a connection with him because she knows that her dad had a connection with him and i hope that there's some instance or instances where she he does something and i i really want her to stand firm with some beliefs that she has or stance on a position and stand up to the adults where like she did kind of in secret a bit last season with the talking to Negan like Michonne like she was like yeah, I've been talking to him like but I want her to be yeah. become more firm with stuff especially with him like I want him to do something that she doesn't like and her stand up and be vocal about it because I think that would affect him a lot but I'm I'm I don't know if the writers are actually going to go that route with it i hope that him and carol aren't on the same bullshit this season though we'll see but honestly the way that they made it sound in the trailer and usually it's a misdirect but the whole oh just get on the bike and go it's like honestly i wouldn't mind that if they just dipped for half a season fine give tons more screen time to all these other characters that i feel like could use room to blossom could you imagine picture this <laughs> 
Daryl and Carol leave on the bike to their own spinoff for the rest of forever. Me and you don't have to watch it. And then we get all these other characters growth. <laughs> I would almost be like, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's not an almost. I would absolutely be okay with that. Like, it could be sort of like how Maggie is now, where they're like, we got some letters from Carol and Daryl. Uh, it's like, they're best buds. They're definitely not together. Like, make it clear that they're not together. Like, they're they're BFFs. <laughs> and it off is a best friend series. They, yeah, just a, a, the adventures of Carol and Daryl on the road. Carol and Daryl and Farrell and all that other crap. <laughs> but yeah, if they were... So the people that were hard stains of them could just watch them and loathe every second of it. But it wouldn't be shoved down their throats anymore, which I would not mind. Because there's that. so much room that w is being taken up by them repeating the same goddamn arc. They could be used for so many new and interesting things with characters we don't have enough time with. Uh, it's, it's almost painful. <laughs> just... <laughs> I know, and we can see, like, we see the background characters and all that they do and all that they could be and, like, all their potential. Why not, like, let us have them and all their greatness? Like, yeah. could you imagine, like, I know that you like Jerry and Ezekiel. Truly is down to see check moment from Jerry. Hold up, hold up. All I heard was down C, check Jerry. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So I would love to see a moment of Jerry going to King Ezekiel and being like, here's your check. You're my king. Pick yourself up, and we're gonna do this together. Like, what? <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Give me that. And the kingdom still has, like, such a loyal fan base, and I know that I can't speak for everyone. I know that I can't speak for everyone, but That's exactly we what feel gypped. We feel gypped. We feel totally gypped, because like I said in the article that I wrote about King Ezekiel and Jerry, all of the stuff that comes out is they're depressed, it's terrible, like, their worlds are ending, like, it might be the end of them, but here's a kiss in the trailer with Michonne not grieving but making our character that's so passionate seem shallow when he's like come on this is one of the most passionate people on this show like you can't just like erase that i mean he can go through his grieving period yes but that doesn't take away who he is as a person so it's yeah. not it's not fair especially jerry and everyone all the the king toppers the king toppers <laughs> they're all great yeah, I think I don't have any more questions for you. Well, a, a last bit on the, the Jerry Ezekiel thing. I would not be opposed to seeing a, a check from him about him still like being his king, picking himself up, getting his, his stuff together, but I did think that it was interesting and as horrible as it sounds and unstan-like of me, <laughs> it was almost it was a bit refreshing to have him kind of go off on jerry a bit that he was like i'm not your king like like it's mm -hmm. basically like it's a fantasy like i get that like look at all the shit we're dealing with this is much more serious right now we need to focus on this and not on like playing roles that we've been playing for a while and it's not to say that he can't have those roles but i do think long term it might not be the most practical as much as we love the environment that yeah. it's built and I love seeing that more than I love seeing the practical side of him and Jerry. <laughs> like, that it's not, it's nowhere near as fun and just, like, all... Cobbler! Yeah, like, it's not anywhere near that, but I feel like it would allow them to explore more angles with them, if that makes sense, that they haven't gotten to yet. So I feel like yeah. if they could find a balance between still having that camaraderie of that, like hierarchy but still being practical most of the time while allowing for the emotional stuff it would be a perfect combo but they they they've yet to get it perfect they, they've gotten close a few times but they're still they're lacking a bit but we'll see after the i mean the you're talking to a person i think i've said that phrase a few times in this video but 
I understand that TV characters are still human and have human emotion. So even if, like, King Ezekiel would take this entire season to be miserable and sulk because he lost everything, that's his right. Like, do I want to see him miserable? Absolutely not. He deserves the world. He's, like, one of the true, like, wholesome goods in this world. But if he did, I get it. I get it. Again, whole other conversation we could have for another video on why he deserves to grieve and they're not showing it properly and they're just over shoving down Carol's grief down our throat even though we've seen it nine fucking times! I love the show. I love it. It's never, never makes me upset, never. Never? <laughs> I know, never. Uh, just to do an outro so, so I can go to sleep because yeah. I'm going to have to wake up in like an hour. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so is there is there anything else that you can think of that we haven't said, not discussed, because we're not going to discuss any more stuff, <laughs> but just any other things? Are you doing any streaming type things, whether it's YouTube gaming or anything, any just YouTube live streams, anything like that coming up? Um, I, I'm trying to do like every Friday around like 12 lunch Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So, lunchtime, Eastern Standard Time. Typically, when I'm going to try and stream, it might change. Just keep watching my community tab. I'm just going to be talking about maybe, like, predictions for the next episode, how I'm feeling about the show, that type of thing. Okay. Just like I did for Fear. And you have a Discord as well. I do. And I'm assuming it's yeah. it's the it's the same, right? It's Everything just... is Mama Deadhead. Okay. Same. Yeah, that see that's that's where you lucked out because your Twitter's Mama Deadhead, your YouTube's Mama Deadhead, your Discord's Mama Deadhead, and Deadhead. I, yeah, I mine's too long, so I couldn't make my Twitter that. So my Twitter's just Group of Gamers. It's not. There's no ink. There's no numbers. Nothing. But I've been trying to get the numbers out of there because I feel like it's just kind of clunky. So, but then again, I don't really do the, that much gaming on here. I do the streams, but other than that, um, are you starting any new shows? other than The Walking um, Dead Season 10 that you want to tell people about? Well, did essentially therapy at this point, and in a couple weeks she's going to be starting preschool. Have my full days free. I'm so proud of her. I just want to say that. Sorry for hijacking this video to say that. No. Hijack all you want if you're going to be talking about how proud you are of her. But, like, a few words at the beginning of the year to, like, me, like, really working with her. And then me really working with her over the summer while school was out. And when she came back, they said that she had surpassed all the goals that they set and that they wanted to bring out new ones. And then they said, we think that maybe her best bet is preschool now because she's kind of beyond the scope of, like, just one-on-one -on -one therapy. We think she would do well with the group. I'm so excited. But that frees up. A good portion of my day to reactions and videos and uh, whatever else so um, I will certainly certainly be finished I know that I've done a couple episodes of both but I will definitely be finishing Stranger Things and Into the Badlands <laughs> finally after a long wait we'll see who can I'm finish posting sure. Stranger Things first <laughs> yeah um and definitely whenever Orville comes back on, because Orville is just, like, great. Love Orville. Orville's awesome. But I think it doesn't come back on until, like, maybe a couple years. Because they're going to Hulu. Mm -hmm. They're going straight to Hulu. Yeah. Okay. But if you guys have any shows you want me to react to... Send away? <laughs> Let me know. Yeah. Let me know. Um, are you going to be putting out any other videos for season 10 before the, the premiere or live premiere I guess before the live premiere like any um, predictions I, anything like that yeah I think that I'm just gonna do maybe a little bit of predictions but more like general feelings on how I'm feeling going into 10 because I mean with how fear ended knowing like what a big like Morgan fan I am I'm just like, it's Thursday, and I still haven't watched the premiere, and I have AMC premiere. It's just, like, I'm not, like, my heart really isn't there, if that makes sense. 
Oh, hard. trust me, trust me. It was it was the thing. <laughs> I was gonna watch it the same night. I was gonna watch it right after. I was gonna do like a three, like a two three minute like thing at the end of Fear. Talk about the season. I was like, mm. but it wasn't like it wasn't a dumpster fire. But it was like it was pretty, it was pretty rough in some aspects. And and mm-hmm. then I was gonna hop right on to season ten, super hype. No, that is not what happened. And that I would be surprised if that happened for anybody. <laughs> but and me you know <laughs> it'll just it'll give it'll up your spirits just, it's nearly been a week jack it's nearly I, been i a know year. i know it's okay we're, i li- we're i remember i think i told you too like i saw it on friday i saw the on amc premiere i saw the finale and i was just like I was, a, I was a ticking time bomb over the weekend of emotion because I couldn't talk to anybody about it. And then it happened. And then that night I could have watched it. I could have watched it that night. But even on a second viewing, I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. I just... I feel you. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. No. I won't be okay. Yes, you will. Sweet ice cream. <laughs> I love Wait, is it okay uh, to ask your fans for ice cream for me? <laughs> I mean, hey, if you guys want to send her ice cream, go right ahead. Do you have a P.O. box? Dang it, I wish I did have a P.O. box. I, I love that Jess tweeted out asking if, if... She was like, I don't know if you survived. I was like, oh, Jess, you're so nice. Because we all... She's the sweetest! <laughs> she, like, every time... There was another big Morgan episode. I, I think it was 510. I think it was 510. And she, and she added you. Messaged me. She messaged me after, and she she commented on my video. She was like, "I knew I had to come straight here after watching this episode because I wanted to see your reaction to." I knew, like, <laughs> and I I do want to say, like, I know this is so off topic for this video, but I did have a substantial amount of people reach out to me and like send messages and ask if I was okay, which I think is so sweet. But no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not but okay. I, I Thanks for asking, but no. I but lied no, to I'm all not, of you. I'm not I'm okay. I'm so upset. Were you, were you satisfied with, because I know you were very concerned at how I was going to take 510. Were you satisfied with the things that I said about it and how I felt? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I understand sure? everybody. Yeah, no, I understand everybody's right. point of view. I saw yours, and it wasn't... It wasn't bad. It's not like you were like, this, this is a What is this dumpster fire? This is garbage. Yeah, yeah. More could be better of... off with a riding the horse through the night and not her. And... No, you know, I never have an issue with anyone bringing constructive criticism to something. That's kind of criticism. Con- yeah, constructive criticism. I don't mind that. It's when you're like, dumpster fire, hate Morgan, hate Grace, hate all of them. When, like, actually, I think, like, Grace is probably one of the even grounds on, like, people that hate fear and people that like fear. I think that most everybody likes Grace. Yeah. I haven't really... I haven't, I haven't seen haven't anyone, really... like, fuck, or, like, not... Yeah. But, I mean, then again, it gets into a point that, like, there's people that are playing characters that people are gonna love or hate, or like charlie like there's nothing she could ever do that would make you like her and it's like would you okay question don't have to go into long explanation of it if you who do you hate more her or daryl well no. actually well okay who do you between daryl and carol who do you hate more Ooh, that's hard <laughs> Ooh. well see it's easy to put um the hate of Daryl over Charlie because at least she recognizes that her actions were bad and she's like you know like she has that recognition of like, like she's I, like I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong I mean yeah, exactly. I still she's not like, I don't judge her as much for it because of what she lost like just before but that doesn't make it right necessarily no like, well, it Nick wasn't right because... either but but especially because she caused it. She caused the whole thing to happen because yeah. she used the situation. So, like, but it's easier for me to be, like, she understands, like, 
what happened and she's trying to make up for it. Daryl's not, like, at all. And he doesn't even, like, recognize that anything he's done is wrong. So it's easy to put, like, the Daryl hate over. But Carol and Daryl... You know, that's... Because you know I like... I prefer, like, outness. And so, like... So, almost, at least he's, like, outwardly ignorant with some of the things that he does. Versus Carol, like, sneaking around and being, like, one way and then is another way. I... <sighs> is it, but the is it one you want to think of or sleep on? I think I might sleep okay. on that one. If you do, then you gotta, you gotta come back in your finale reaction with it before... The, you could do it before or after the video. Because it might change based <laughs> on the episode. We'll see. Oh, based on the 1001? I mean, Carol and Daryl are, are obviously going to be in the episode, so who knows? They Dang, could say totally they would. could <laughs> say or do something small or big that could change your opinion on it. could make you love both of them. You never know. If, he, if she makes some one-off comments to this man, then it might be her. <laughs> but if he makes some one-off comments to this man, it might be him. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I don't know that that actually is a hard question when i like sit back and think about like everything huh randall karen and david lizzie and mika it's a whole long list of shitty shit that they both done but i, I will let you sleep on that for a couple days if you want okay i might have to <laughs> all right i didn't think that we would be able to talk that much about reasons we dislike people but at least that we we were fairly respectful and constructive with yeah. it. I feel like, like if people have watched through both of these, and still feel like we're not justified in the way that we're, th I don't really know what to tell you. I feel yeah. like we gave quite a few reasons that we we didn't just say, man, I hate them. They're stupid because of this. Like we actually we tried to be a little more detail on why we felt the way we did yeah. about each thing and by all means if you guys have questions or clarification you want on something like the reason that we feel or think a certain way about something and you want to ask it in a respectful way not just like how could you think this that's so dumb like if you're gonna yeah. say that we're just gonna ignore you but like if yeah. you want to be like i hear you here i think completely different could you go into more detail about why you felt this way about this decision or whatever? Like, w I mean, I'll be more than happy to try and explain it if I can. I mean, you're, I feel like you're probably the same way you're better at explaining stuff than I am usually. So. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, you, you sort of awakened my at least comfortability in being public with my dislike for him. Most of the time I just kind of tried to be just outwardly just be like, oh yeah, Daryl. But like inside I'm like, this fucker. Like, yeah, if you if you go back to um, like some of my first videos that are so cringy, like please don't go back to them. <laughs> but if you go back to some I'll of my first up on videos, the video like, right now. If you pull up some of my early discussions, you'll see that I say things like exactly agree with Daryl's choice here because I think that he's being kind of this way. He like kind That's of. That's exactly how I was doing it before too. At some point, I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck this fast. He's doing everything wrong. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed these very lengthy, but hopefully informative discussions about the reasons that we are not huge fans of Mr. Dixon. And if you are watching Just Mind, make sure to go check hers out too, because we do have some different opinions, believe it or not, if you couldn't tell. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys will tune in for the... Season 10 premiere on both of our channels. It should be up Sunday, right? Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. And this has been Jack and... Deadhead. And we are out. Peace. <laughs> Chop AMC, CPR Agency, and LDS. Fuck you. Oh. You are some scum. Shit. No one likes or respects what you're doing. Jake.
I don't know if you think you're funny, you think you're clever, you're abusing the system. We don't care at this Should point. I like, hold up, no. We're not gonna back down from this. It's borderlining harassment at this point. Is that Dante? fucked up. And it needs to stop. So cut the shit. I'm not messing around anymore. Really I made a video care. like this like three years ago, and I'm sick of it. Ah, it is not stopped. And whoa, this isn't whoa, just wait, for me. What? This is for all of the other creators out there that are going through this bullshit. Be the bigger fucking person. Jesus.